I'm so happy you're here with us today as we worship. And as we're singing, you know, pour out our praise wherever you are. Just pour out your praise to God. I want, you, I want to paint this picture for you. Imagine a pitcher of water. And the more it tips, the more water it pours. And I want to encourage you that if you look throughout history, it seems like the more that the Christian gets pressed, and the men of God and the women of God, the more they got pressed, the more praise came out of their lives. I want to encourage you wherever you are. You might be in a difficult situation, but I want you to pour out your praise wherever you are. And let's just thank God and to take a moment. I want to read this from Jeremiah. And the Lord is speaking through Jeremiah to a people who are in captivity. And he says, this is what the Lord says. When I bring Israel home again from captivity and restore their fortunes, Jerusalem will be rebuilt on its ruins and the palace reconstructed as before. There will be joy and songs of thanksgiving, and I will multiply my people and not diminish them. I want to encourage you that the Lord wants to do a work, and the Lord is doing a work. And wherever you are, we might not be in, the, in captivity like, like the people were, but maybe you're in a place today where you feel there's challenges in front of you. I want to encourage you that the Bible says whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And so wherever you're going through, just call on the Lord, pour out your praise to him because he's deserving of praise no matter what your circumstance looks like. And together as we worship here, I'm so grateful to be able to praise him. I'm so grateful that you're praising him and you're joining with us. And I want, I'm, I'm so grateful that you're staying strong with us and I hope that as you, you're growing more and more in the word of God. Let's take a moment to pray and just to thank God, wherever you are, maybe it's just lifting your hands, maybe it's just bowing your heart. Wherever you are, pour out some praise to him. Father, we thank you for all of your goodness, all of your mercy. God, that you're as much a part of our life now as you ever were, that you always see us, that you're always with us. God, that you're for us, not against us, and we thank you for that. And we want, God, to see and be aware of what you're doing. That we would focus on those things that are eternal and put our eyes on things above. And we thank you for that, God, that you enable us to do that by your Holy Spirit. You said that I'll put my spirit in them and cause them to walk in my ways. And we thank you for that because you enabled us to love you and to serve you forever by your Holy Spirit. And so we praise you this morning together. And I bless every single person that's watching. And as we continue the service with the sermon and the, the word from you, God, we pray a continued attitude of worship and openness in our heart to hear from you. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, wherever you are, you're, don't, don't forget today we're not signing off. So we're just going to continue. If you just give us a moment to move some of this stuff. But first I want to share an announcement, um, just a typical one that if you want to uh, send something over to the church, P.O. Box 7, New York Mills, New York, 13417. Uh, you can al always find sermons and other stuff on our website, info, I I'm sorry, calvarygospelnym.com. And you can email us at info at calvarygospelnym.com. So I hope you're joining with us. I hope you've been watching our videos, staying encouraged. And please wait on this feed. For this sermon. Let us just move this and we'll be right with you. Good morning, everyone. So glad to be here with you this morning. Um, we're at church, a uh, very small number of us. Um, but we decided to um, come to church to do this and for a couple of reasons. One reason is that so you don't have to refresh your, your laptop, your computer, and uh, whatever you're using uh, to get back on. And uh, so this is going to be an easy transition. And I just feel like it's, it's time to come back into the church and just uh, start giving the word and worship together. Um, and I know that there's news out there of... Uh, of new things happening to to move forward during this virus of gathering and and as we as a church and leaders um, continue to hear more information and and pray and get the heart of God we're going to continue to move forward 
uh, whenever God gives us that word also. So be encouraged. Uh, we're encouraged, and we know that uh, God is still on the throne, and uh, he's doing great things. You know, if you, re if you go back through the scriptures, I'm reminded of this. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the people were in isolation. When you look at David in the caves and Noah in the ark and um, just Paul in prison, and there was isolation, there was quarantine, there was times when um, they didn't know why these things were happening, but they were out there alone and separated from, from the rest of the world. But when they came out, great things happened um, in their lives and in the world and in people's lives. And so that is what we're praying. That's what we're believing. That in, in this time, that we would redefine you know, our relationship with Jesus and uh, know who we are in Christ. You know, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And so during this time of isolation, quarantine, you know, it, it just gives us a chance to, to, to refocus on who God is, a great God, just like we were worshiping. You know, we're just, we're going to continue to give his praises that's due him and exalt his name because he's worthy of our praise. So I want to encourage everyone uh, today who is listening. And I want to say a, a shout out to the graduates. You know, this is a rough time. Uh, it's a very, uh, it's not a normal time, but I just want to say a prayer for our graduates from college and high school and, and uh, grade school. And, you know, um, this has been a, a different season, but it's the same God. And I want to remind us that when God gave me the series, same God, different season, wow, was he right on <laughs> because many things have happened. So let's just pray uh, for our, our young people our students, and our, our children right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you, Father. Yes, you are the same God, different seasons. Transitions are happening uh, through, through, uh, through graduation and, and through the summer and going into to the fall um, and when school uh, begins again. Lord God, that your hand would still continue to be upon our students, our children, our faculty, the teachers, and our principals, and uh, everyone, our superintendents, everyone who's involved with the education, God. God, we know, Lord, God, that you, you are, are, are worthy of all our praise, Lord. And I know you're our good shepherd and you will protect us and, and keep us from all harm. And we just, we just put a surrounding hedge around our children, Lord. And, when, and our teachers and faculty during this time, Lord. Uh, bring an encouraging word. Help the parents, Lord, uh, during this time um, in teaching and, and being home. But again, the graduates, Lord, in this transition of life, God, that you would be there and let them know the plan that you have for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited to be here this morning. Um, and the title of my message this morning is Define the relationship. Define the relationship. See, during this time of quarantine, unity has been under fire. Personal agendas uh, are being pushed. Attacks on people's characters. Our normal routines have been grossly disrupted and changed forever. You know, we may feel that the original plan of God has changed, but God's plan has never changed. He has plan A, and he has plan A, and he has plan A. And when Christ said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail, that's still a promise for you and I today. That has not changed. And I am so glad that God is unchangeable. He's unshakable. Uh, he's not moved by what is happening. He is, God is encouraging us to define our relationship and what i mean by that we're going to get into that define our relationship with him we're going to have to make choices especially during this time and i know people have already had to do that what is your relationship with jesus christ and so we are the church we are the church and that christ is building you and i you know, sometimes we can get our vision on the church building. Like, we're standing in this building right now. I'm standing here, and it's, it's empty. And, uh, and it just reminds me that I'm the church. You're the church. It's not these four walls. It's not the pews. And it's not even the programs. It's not the ministries. 
It is you and I are the church, and Jesus is asking us, he's asking us this question, who do you say that I am? Because people have their own opinion once you mention Jesus. And so we are the church, and he's building us during this time. 1 Peter 2.5 says, You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. See, he's building us. We're living stones. Why? Because he's a living God. He's alive. And he's doing great things in you and I today. Our passage is Matthew 16. If you have your Bibles, uh, turn to Matthew 16. And we're going to spend a couple weeks in this, um, in this passage, Matthew 16. It's Peter's confession of uh, who Jesus Christ is. This is um, just an awesome passage. And I really feel like God has brought us to this passage for the season that, that we're in. We're going to start with verse 13. And it, and it starts off with, now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, I'm going to stop right there. When he came into the district, he asked his disciples, when, he came, when Jesus and his disciples came into New York Mills, when Jesus and his disciples came into New Hartford, Marcy, Deerfield, uh, New Hartford, um, uh, Ilian, Herkimer, you know, the Mohawk Valley. You know, when, when Jesus and the disciples came in to this area, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the uh, prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, we're not going to go through all those scriptures uh, today, but we're going to stay in this passage for the next couple weeks. So as we read this, when Jesus came to this district, I want to give you a little backdrop on this. This, when I started studying this, when Jesus came to this city, the backdrop is, is the disciples and Jesus, they already left another city, and they're coming to this city, and the city they just left it was um, false teachings on Jesus. That's all they were doing, was teaching false teachings on Jesus. And so now they come into this region. Now understand this region. This region, when they walk into this region, this is the backdrop when Jesus asked this question that's probably one of the you know, most important questions he'll ever ask, and he's, he's asking us today. The backdrop is this is full of idols. This is a city that's idolatry. This is a city that um, the Greek god Pan originated there. And as they come into the city, there's, um, there's um, 14 temples and places of worship. The god Baal is very prevalent, and they worship Baal. So there's all these statues, there's all these shrines, there's, also, there's all these places of worship, but they're all about dead gods. And so this is the backdrop, and Jesus is going to ask this question to his disciples, and, um, and they're, they're, they're going to have to answer this question in front of all these other gods. And Baal, the sun god, he was the sun god, and he was the storm god. And people would have to bring their crops as an offering to Baal, and if they didn't, then he would become the storm god. And so everything was based on performance. Did you do what the, what the dead God asked you to do? And so sometimes, I just want to interject this. Sometimes we do the same thing. You know, is our relationship with Jesus based on a performance or is it based on the grace of God and what Jesus has already done for us? And so the disciples, they're all, they're all into, the, into this group. They're all in this city. And this is the backdrop that Jesus is going to unload this question to them. 
And he stands in the area littered with all these, uh, all these gods, a place where Caesar worship dominated the landscape. And here it is, all the places Jesus asked this question. But I want to say something. That's where we're standing today. We're standing amongst a lot of idolatry. We're standing amongst, amongst a lot of gods. And you say, well, pastor, you know, I don't worship statues. You know, I don't drive by a statue and stop my car and get on my knees. Or, you know, I don't worship statues. But how about the God of money, the God of pride, the God of power, the God of jealousy, the God of anger, the God of hatred, you know, the God of time that, you know, instead of spending time with Jesus, you know, we've made time. You know, if any free time we have, we just, you know, selfishly um, give it to ourselves. You know, what, are, what do you love that has replaced Jesus? So, yeah, we can say, well, you know, I don't have those type of gods, you know, the, that the disciples were looking at. But we have a lot of gods that sometimes we've given ourselves over to. And so Jesus asked his disciples. First, he says, who do you say that I am? Who do the people say that I am? And then the disciples, that's an easy question, you know. Uh, John the Baptist you know, you're resurrected, you're John the Baptist, resurrected, and you're preaching the kingdom of God. Some say you're Elijah. You know, all the miracles you're doing and the miracles that Elijah did. Some say Jeremiah. Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet. And Jesus, you have compassion over people. So some people are saying Jeremiah. See, everyone has an opinion of who Jesus is. Just mention Jesus' name in a room. And you'll get a lot of opinions on who Jesus is. And Jesus has become a curse word. You know, it's amazing how, you know, you're growing up and even now, you know, you hear people, they'll do something, they'll hurt themselves or they'll get frustrated. You never hear them say, oh, Buddha, oh, Muhammad. You know, the first thing is like, oh, Jesus. You know, why is Jesus, the first word that comes out of everybody's mouth, but it's the first word that when you say it, everyone has an opinion on it. And, and under the persecution that believers are going through, you know, that just encourages me more. That if Jesus was powerless, that Jesus didn't exist, that Jesus had no influence on society or the world, why do people make a big thing about Jesus? Because Jesus is alive, he's powerful, his word is true, he's righteous and he's holy, and he's coming back for his church. Hallelujah. So Jesus, again, this back, I want you to see this backdrop. We're in the same place. We're in our city, in our workplaces. You know, no matter where we are, we're, we're, we're in the same place the disciples are standing. And just mention the word Jesus, and again, people all have an opinion on who he is. And they say, so here's the second question. He says, but who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? See, Jesus is saying, define your relationship. Define the relationship. Are you committed or are you interested? See, a lot of people um, are interested in Jesus, but they're not committed to Jesus. You know, do we use Jesus as a spare tire when we feel flat? You know, do we, do we use Jesus as a parachute when we feel like we're falling? You know, do we, um, is Jesus a 911? In a case of emergency, I'm going to call on Jesus. Is that who Jesus is to you and I? See, we need to know who Jesus is. And this question is a question for us today, especially in the season that we're in. Define your relationship. Define the relationship. Who is Jesus to you? Hey, David had to define his relationship with God when he came against Goliath. Moses had to define the relationship with his God when he came in front of Pharaoh. Joshua, when he came in front of Jericho, he had to define his relationship with God. Whose side are you on, the angel said. and Because uh, the angel said, I don't have a side, it's me. You know, Jesus was representing the angel, and um, he said, Joshua, what side are you on? And so now is the time. We have to decide, you know, Define your relationship. What is it? Who do you say I am?
How about Abraham when God said, leave your family and your country, go to a land that I'm going to show you. He doesn't even know what the land is. He hasn't even seen the land. He doesn't even know where he's going. He's got to trust God. Man, that's defining his relationship with God. Jesus defined his relationship with his father at the cross. So that question today that Jesus had asked the disciples, he's asking that same question to us today. And he picked them so well. I like how he, he picked fishermen. He picks the tax, tax collector. He, pick, he picked, you know, 12 rough neck, um, uneducated, you know, had no clue what was going on. And th these are his disciples that he's talking to, and that he's ministering to, that he's mentoring, that he's walking with for three years. But guess what? Every time I read that, it reminds me that Jesus picked that group of people because that gives me a chance to know that I could be Jesus' disciple one day. That I don't have to be educated in some type of theology or where I live or the, uh, or the car I drive or the money I have. God is, is um, coming after all of us. He came for the lost. And so when I see who he's picked for the disciples, it always reminds me, hey, we all have a chance at this. God has come for all of us. And so I like when he says that, you know, he picked them to be adopted into the family of God. God wants to adopt you into his family, but you have to make that decision. You have to define your relationship with Jesus. And so Jesus asked this question, who do you say that I am? In Peter's confession, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Peter's confession was so important. It came against the backdrop of all those gods, all those false teachings. Peter's answer was not the result of reading a book. It wasn't the result of a prophecy. It was not the result of going to some class. When Jesus said, who do you say that I am? His answer came from God, revealing the truth to him, from God's mouth to his obedient heart. You know, I want to ask you, is your heart open when God speaks? Is your heart open when the Holy Spirit speaks to you? Only when we first acknowledge Jesus as Lord can God acknowledge us. Peter does not quote some book, like I said, or prophecy. He responds spontaneously through his heart. The Holy Spirit. He didn't even realize that the Holy Spirit was speaking to him. You know, sometimes we don't even realize that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and I today. But he is, and the reason why we don't know sometimes is because we feel like the Holy Spirit would never speak to me. But when you are, you are a believer in Christ, the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you, and he's speaking to you daily if we open up our hearts and our minds to him. So Peter says, you're the Christ. You are the anointed one. You are, you're not one of the prophets. You're not Jeremiah. You're not Elijah. You're not just some incredible person. You are the anointed one, the Messiah, the Savior. You're the one who we've been waiting for. You've come to take the sins away from this world. I know who you are. You're the one that was spoken of in the Garden of Eden, who would crush the serpent's head, the son of the living God, not a dead God. And the son meant that you are one with God. And so Peter has this revelation, and the revelation came from God through the Holy Spirit. And um, God wants to speak to you and I today. And the second thing, when he says, he tells Simon, you are blessed. You are blessed. When he made that statement, he goes, you are blessed. And I want to say, when are we blessed? When we acknowledge Jesus as Lord. When he acknowledged Christ, the Son of the living God, then Jesus says, you are blessed. Church, people, you know, we want blessings from God, but, you know, are we one with God? Because here it says, you are blessed when he acknowledged Jesus as Lord. See, we are sons and daughters, and we have heaven as our home. We can enjoy our inheritance with God. We are adopted into his family when we acknowledge him as being the Son of God, of the living God, as Christ, the anointed Messiah, who has come to save the world. That's when blessings come. That's when God is able to open up our hearts to the things that he has for us. And then he says, flesh and blood did not reveal it to you, but my father. 
See, the Holy Spirit speaks to us. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can draw us to Jesus. Even Peter, in the state that he was in, and, and the Holy Spirit came and spoke to him. No one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. 1 Corinthians 2.11. No one can come to know Christ without the Holy Spirit. No one. That's why the Holy Spirit is so important. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible says. Read John 16. Um, uh, Jesus says, when I go, I'm going to send you the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. And he will, he will reveal the truth to you. Um, he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. It's the Holy Spirit that draws. So when Peter made that confession, that great confession to Jesus and who he was, what, he, what really was happening, the Holy Spirit was speaking to him. I want to encourage us that the Holy Spirit can speak to you, and he will speak to you. This same Spirit who gave this revelation to Peter is the same Spirit who reveals Christ to us today. Hallelujah. He reveals Christ to you and I. Will you open your heart up to him? Will you open up your heart to the Holy Spirit? See, in the scripture it says, Let's go, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Why did Jesus say, you know, Simon Barjona? And Simon means reed, like blowing in the wind with no backbone. See, Simon was a little unstable. <laughs> he was a little weak. He was a little cowardly. And he was a little inconsistent and probably many more things as you read, you know, in the scripture about Peter. But all of a sudden, when the revelation of the Holy Spirit comes upon Peter, and Peter acknowledges and, and makes that great confession, no, you are Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, the son of the living God. And then he goes, and then God, and Jesus says, your name now is Peter, and Peter means rock. He was chosen and blessed by God. See, that's what God does. When we receive Christ, he changes us from the inside out. No more are you a reed just waving and back and forth and, and the wind is just using you to, to go wherever it wants to go. No, you are now Peter the rock and I'm going to build my church not on a man but on the confession that he made that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Son of the living God. And I'm so excited that Jesus changes our of who we are. It says that we become a new creation in Christ. We have a new character. You know, um, our, we have the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, um, faithfulness, goodness. God is just moving and doing great things. And I love how he says that. He goes, it's no more you're some reed that just keeps on blowing back and forth. You are going to be the rock. And we know as we read the scriptures that Peter, he gives that great message and 3,000 get saved. He is the message his, his confession of who Jesus is. And I want to encourage you today that sometimes we just need to make a confession. We need to say, hey, I need to define my relationship with Jesus. It's no more going to be a reed going back and forth, whatever the wind blows and takes me here or there. No, I'm going to be a rock. Why? Because Jesus is my rock. Jesus is my shield. Jesus is my hiding place. Um, Jesus is my, is my great shepherd. Jesus is my reconciler. Jesus is my bread of life. Jesus is my um, resurrection of life. Hallelujah. See, it changes all things when we know who Jesus is, when we define our relationship with him. I love that. See, there's this exchange that was taking place when God reveals himself to Peter and when God reveals himself to you and I. We learn more about God in the return. God starts telling you who you are. Jesus says, you, Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. See, the exchange that Jesus has with us when we acknowledge him as the Lord and Savior of our life, and it all happens. And it's, we get to know more about God, but we get to know more about how God feels and looks at us. See, that's where our identity has changed. And we get to know how much God loves us, cares for us, has given us a plan. And his plan is not B, C, and D. Even if we mess up and even if we make mistakes, God's plan is still plan A. He is still there with us. And I want to encourage, growing like Christ comes by his revelation. 
to us. What is the revelation that you hear from God today? You know, I'm going to have um, Mark come back up and Angie come back up as we close this out. And the question that, I'm, that I really, that Jesus is asking us today is, you need to define the relationship. You need to define who Jesus is in your life. Peter didn't feel like a rock. But see, Jesus saw beyond that. Despite what he was at the time, and despite what others saw him to be, Jesus saw that Simon could become the same as true of us, is, is of us. See, Jesus sees beyond today. Jesus sees beyond our struggles. Jesus sees what he has created. Jesus sees his plan. Jesus sees our destiny. You need to see that. And you need to hear that from the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit reveal to you what Jesus has for you today. I'm going to read uh, one more scripture, and I'm going to have them come up, and um, they're going to just close us out in worship. I just want to uh, spend a, uh, some time in just worshiping God. Philippians 2.13. For it is not your strength, but it is God who effectively at work in you, both to will and to work, that is his strengthening and energizing and creating in you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose for his good pleasure. For it's not your strength. It's all about God. It's all about what God is doing in you. And so I want to leave you with that. Rely on Christ. You become who he says you are. Rely on him. The central issue in our walk with God is not sin management. How can I control the sin? If you're a believer, we're not a slave to sin anymore. We're not, the Bible says. But it's understanding of who we are in Christ. You need to know who you are in Christ. And you can only do that when you define the relationship. What is your commitment to Jesus? When Peter said that one statement, you know, you're Christ. You're the anointed. You're the Messiah. You're the son of the living God. That was it. The Holy Spirit revealed that to him today. In this time and in this season, don't be discouraged. Don't have anxiety. Don't have fear. Have faith that God will reveal himself, give you a revelation of who he is and what he's doing in this season. Hallelujah. We're just going to allow them to come and, and uh, worship God as we close this out. We're going to be singing One Thing Remains again talking about how God's love will always remain and other things may not remain but God's love will never fail.
I just want to close in prayer, but I want to give a, an invitation to people that are listening today. You know, this word of um, who do you say that I am? You know, we have to define that relationship. Is our relationship with the world? Is our relationship with Jesus, the Son of the living God, the Messiah, the Anointed One? We're going to have to make that decision. Everyone is going to have to make that decision at some point in their life. Why not today? You know, and you may be saying, but I, I, I don't, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. Um, you know, I feel like I, that's performance. God's not looking for performance. He's looking for a willing, surrendered heart that would give themselves over to the anointed one, Jesus Christ. And so it, it's so important that we grab a hold of this word today and just make a decision. See, allow God to clean the mess. See, I've heard this a lot. People say, if I walked in church, the church walls would fall down. Church walls are not going to fall down. Jesus is waiting for you. And I always like it when, it when I read this through the scriptures. It's everyone is going through struggles. And I want to encourage. See, see, sometimes we're taught, fix your struggle, fix your problem, then come to Jesus. That's not what the Bible says. Jesus comes to us. And Jesus came to us when we were yet sinners. And so God sent his son knowing. And some that would not, that would walk away. Even they walked away at the cross. The physical Jesus. And I want to encourage you from my heart. That you need to make a decision. These are times that, that, the new, that there's a new normal. And I feel I want to share this. You won't know what that new normal is unless you have Jesus. Because Jesus is presenting a new normal to the church, to the believers, and to this world. But the Holy Spirit needs to, you need to get that revelation from the Holy Spirit in this time. And so you may think you're not worthy, but God has called you worthy and valuable enough to lay down his life for you. And if you were the only one that was watching this, he did it for you. It'll change your life. It'll change your life. How, how the disciples, you know, just ordinary, uneducated, God took them, and I always liked that, like I said earlier, it gives, it gives everyone hope and say, man, if Peter can make it, I can make it. If Paul, the apostle Paul, was killing the church, killing the people, and putting them in prison, for, for talking about Jesus and preaching the word, and all of a sudden, Jesus encounters him. It changed his life. It defined his relationship. In Acts chapter 9, Paul had to define his relationship. Is it with the world, or is it with this Messiah? I want to encourage you. you got to make a decision. We're all going to make that decision one day when Jesus comes back. Why not now? and enjoy the benefits of walking with Jesus. He's awesome. He loves you. He doesn't condemn you. He's opening up a way for you and any struggle you have. So I just want you to be able to just, because all you have to do is say, Lord, I receive that. You are my Messiah the one that we've all been waiting for, that you died on that cross. You came, you died on that cross. You've forgiven us of all our sins. And you sit at the right, you put in that tomb and you were raised up, you were resurrected. You're alive, you're sitting at the right hand of the Father and you're interceding for us right now. You just receive that. By your grace, not my performance. It's not whether I'm worthy or not worthy. It's not a performance. God already performed. You can't perform, but you can lay your life down and give it to Jesus. Acknowledge him as your Lord. And it says the Holy Spirit comes in, dwells with you, empowers you, teaches you, instructs you, guides you. That's all you have to do. It's not a religious act. It's not a book you have to read. It's not 12 steps on how to get to heaven. One step. Would you acknowledge Jesus as your Lord and Savior? That's all you have to do. Receive him today.
and your life is going to change forever. And guess what? It changes for eternity. Hallelujah. I just want to give you a moment. And if you've already received Christ and you are a believer, man, you're going through some struggles, God loves you. And he's there for you. And he has the answers. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. He's our provider. He's our more than enough. Who do you say that I am? Because Jesus is going to ask that question someday. And he's asking that actually today. He's giving you the opportunity. Who do you say that I am? Open up your hearts to the Holy Spirit right now. And let him reveal who Jesus is. Why? Because he has a plan and a purpose and a destiny for you that you have no clue on what that is. But he's going to provide it for you. And it's an awesome, an awesome life to walk with Jesus. Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for our, uh, our worship that we could just acknowledge you, call upon you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Define the relationship. Lord, put it upon the hearts of the people. Put it upon their hearts. Ask them that question. Who do you say that I am? And when you answer that question, you're going to be free knowing that he is your Lord. The Holy Spirit will reveal that to you. I encourage you to ask and tell God who he is to you. Lord, be everything to me that you want to be. I'm going to open up my heart to you. Because he's asking that question every single day. Who do you say that I am? Answer it like Peter. Allow the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed, everyone.